Hey guys, it's Bub here. In this video, we're taking a look at Windows XP Aero 2. It is true that on this channel, we've been taking a look at quite a lot of Windows XP builds recently, but I've just noticed a fluctuation of them recently, recommended by you guys in the comments below. Please continue recommending me ISOs you want me to take a look at because I love doing viewer recommended videos. This specific mod, Windows XP Aero 2, is a mod of Windows XP, so it is the Windows XP original, not a mod of anything like Windows 10 or 11. And the goal of this mod is to merge basically Windows XP with the Windows Vista and Windows 7 Aero theme. When I looked at some screenshots, it kind of reminds me of Windows Longhorn, but no specific build of Windows Longhorn that I've ever seen before. So this really is truly a unique build. It was kind of like a hybrid Windows XP, Windows Vista, Windows 7 sort of thing. Again, very interested, so I'm very eager to take a look at this and see what this OS actually feels like. This feels like, to me, like it could have came out in 2005, 2004, but let's see. First things first, this startup screen is amazing. I truly love it. It's simplistic, it's easy, straight to the point, and it kind of looks like Windows Vistas with the way that the loading bar is, but I digress. Let's go ahead, very quick and easy setup. Just had to select the disk and then choose how to format it. And we're now formatting the disk and it should very shortly, yep, we are now examining the disks and then it should begin to actually copy the files over. All right, and here we are actually in the out-of-box experience, or this isn't the out-of-box experience, but rather the uh, setup wizard. Um, all it asked us for was to agree to the EULA, but I do want to take this time to acknowledge this setup screen. It is truly beautiful. Kind of see the, I wouldn't really call this arrow because it's not clear, but like this arrow effect, the kind of glossiness, the gradients, the color scheme, this is truly a beautiful setup screen, something very time appropriate and something I could see like Windows XP, SP4, XP version 2 looking like back in the day. All right, and here we go. So now it's asking us to choose our language options. We get to pick a name, so we'll just go Windows. And how did I know it was gonna ask us for a product key and it's something we can't skip. I love when these ISOs ask us for product keys and they don't give it to us in the download. So I have to go dig the internet for one that will work. All right, that was actually pretty easy. All I needed was a Windows XP SP3 volume key and it decided to take it first try. So pretty cool there. I believe that's all the input it needs from us right now. Oh, nope, I lied. It's gonna ask us for network settings, but I just picked typical config. So that's all the input it needed from us. I think we should be good as it finishes to install Windows. I just can't get over how good this setup screen looks. It truly is amazing. All right, and here we go. We are actually in the out-of-the-box experience now, consistent with the theme we saw earlier in the setup wizard, that blue kind of reflective glass look, the beautiful colors. We're just gonna go ahead and skip over internet connectivity and we don't want to register with Microsoft. It is asking us once again to pick a username, so we'll go with Windows as we entered earlier. And that is it. We should be, yep, we're being welcomed into our desktop right now. The first thing I'm gonna go ahead and do is install VMware tools just so you get a better viewing experience. And then we'll go ahead and take a look at this operating system. All right, and here we are on the desktop of Windows XP Aero. The first thing we're gonna take a look at here is the readme file on the desktop. Welcome to Windows XP Aero 2, a sequel to the Windows original XP Aero. It's a blend between Windows 7 and Windows XP. The aim is to give Windows 7 features and aesthetics to Windows XP while keeping the UI the same as the original XP. And we can read through all of this fun stuff here, updated components. This is actually a really long readme file. Um, that is incredibly long. I'm looking for the credits so I can give credits here to the proper people. Um, yep, here are the credits. Thank you to all of these people, especially uh, I'm not going to even try to pronounce your name because I know I'm going to screw it up. I do it every time. You've made quite a few different mods that we've taken a look at on this channel, so I'm grateful to you for developing these. Let's move and take a look at the desktop. By default, we have a Windows XP-like desktop, but obviously the grass is brown and looks dead. Um, I wonder if there's any better wallpapers that are built in here by default. We can take a look at that a little later. Moving down to the taskbar, we can see starting on the right-hand side, we have our traditional system clock. We have Windows Defender. We have Safer Remove and Eject Hardware. We have our Volume Slider, which doesn't actually make noise. We have VMware Tools, which I installed, as well as Help, Restore, which that just, oh, it's up there now. Okay, so it looks like the text-to-speech or speech-to-text is enabled by default. 
Um, interesting. Yep, there it is. It all goes down there for some reason. Over on the left side of the taskbar, we have our start menu, which is a blue color instead of a green color as it was in with the original Windows XP. I do like it though. It is a very nice, it's like a bridge between Windows 7 and Windows XP. I, I truly do like it. And this is what Windows Vista could have been. Opening the start menu, we can see that we have a Again, a hybrid start menu. I do like the profile picture border that we see here. It was ripped directly out of Vista and 7, as well as this lighter theme start menu. Again, it looks pretty nice here. Over here on the right side, we have our pinned applications. So documents, recent items, pictures, music, computer, control panel, default, connect, printers, help support, search, run, typical standard things. And then over here, we have our recent, so Windows Journal, Media Player, Easy Transfer, and WordPad. Going into all programs, Wow, even this, remember, this is Windows XP at its core, but these flyout menus look like they're from Windows Vista. Just the way that, I, I don't know what about them, but they look like Vista. I'm honestly impressed you can even make XP look like this. So we won't read through all of these, but we have a tablet PC, PowerShell is even included here. Uh, the calculator, yep, does look like the regular Windows XP calculator. May have been the same in Vista, I can't remember. Um, command prompt, getting started, you know, nothing too out of the ordinary here. Everything we typically see in Windows XP, except they have the Windows Vista and Windows 7 icons. Under games, we even have Purple Place, which is a Windows 7 and a Windows Vista game. Pretty nice. Maintenance, nothing in startup. Default, desktop gadgets, Internet Explorer. I'd bet this is probably IE6. Oh, no, wait, it's Internet Explorer 8. I was a few years off there. Um, pretty cool, but it's probably not going to work because either the network connection didn't work or because it's just too old of a version. Let's go ahead back into our start menu where we can go down the list. We have Windows Defender, Windows Media Player, Media Player. Oh, we had Media Center and Media Player. Sorry about that. Um, but it does look like this is the newer version of Media Player that came in Windows Vista and Windows 7. We have Windows Update and then we have XPS Viewer. So it is a really interesting hybrid of applications. A lot of them did come from the newer versions of Windows, which is pretty cool. Let's go ahead and open up the Explorer window where we can see, let's take a look at the window border here. So it shares that same silver gray window border that we see throughout the operating system with these nice custom X buttons that when you hover over them, they make a nice arrow effect. Uh, then we have obviously our hard disk drives, devices with removable storage. And on the left side, we have this pane here that we can see system tasks, other places. You know, looks similar to Windows Vista, except with the different color scheme. Uh, nothing too out of the ordinary up here on that status bar. Let's see how much disk space this OS is actually using. So we can see here that we're only using 5.13 gigabytes out of 39.9 gigs, which means we have 34.8 gigabytes free. Pretty cool. Let's take a look at the task manager here to see actual system performance usage. So we're using typical Windows CPU utilization peaks, it moves up and down. Uh, and then we have one gig of RAM, we're using 348 megs, but this is actually the page file. So uh, physical memory statistics, you can look right there. And lastly, like I said earlier, I do want to take a look here at some options that we have to customize the OS. Oh, this is interesting. I have different color schemes. So right now this scheme is called sky, but I could technically change it to really any color that is here. So this would kind of closely mimic, this is like the next natural step to Luna, where it's blue. I do like the blue. We won't look at every single color in the world here, but it is an interesting fact that this OS lets you customize these colors. I really do like that. Um, you know, something that I wouldn't expect a custom ISO to let us do, um, but it does. So, but let's revert it back to the default for the sake of this video. And then we can pick between, wow, there's quite a few different wallpapers here that we are able to choose between. That is pretty cool. Let's go with Windows XP. And yep, that looks like it's a pretty nice one there. Um, now for the thumbnail, I have to figure out how to get back. I have to remember what we, yep, they had it as bliss. And lastly, let's take a look at the screensavers. Uh, nothing too out of the ordinary here, what we typically see in Windows XP and Windows Actually, ribbons didn't come with XP. This is a Vista and 7 screensaver. But with that being said, this is just a high-level overview of this custom ISO. Definitely let me know what you think down in the comments below. Please recommend to me other ISOs that you want me to take a look at. Again, I love doing viewer-recommended videos. 
That being said, if you like this video, make sure to drop a like and subscribe if you're new around here as I do all kinds of different technology videos, including device restorations. That being said, see you all in the next one.